morning, it's Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Will the Lions Fast or Feast? And our scripture is Daniel chapter 6. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius! We are all in agreement, we administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors, that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed, an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. The story is so much a part of the fabric of culture, you merely mention Daniel in the lion's den and heads bob up and down in acknowledgement of its meaning. The short story is the jealousy of the cabinet officials and governors serving a king who favors Daniel, who was just a boy taken into captivity from his home after the 6th century BC conquest of Israel by the Persians. He grew up in Babylon, and he was chosen to serve in King Darius' court. But the native officials couldn't stand the attention Daniel's holy life brought. They devised a plan to get rid of Daniel, but it backfired. Instead of feasting on Daniel's carcass that night, the lions fasted, that is, until the next night, when the king has the officials thrown into the same den Daniel endured the night before. The end of the chapter tells us the administrators and the governors provided a feast for hungry lions. Daniel chapter 6 verse 24, the lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. What's so familiar about the story, understandably so, is the miracle of hungry lions turning up their noses at the thought of a tasty Daniel but eagerly devouring the crooked politicians. Everybody loves that part. Less celebrated is the fidelity and courage of Daniel to pray, knowing the death penalty it'll bring. The laws of the Medes and Persians was like our Constitution. At issue is an enigma the king faced, knowing that he could do nothing once he had signed that bill requiring everybody to pray to him and no other quote-unquote God for 30 days. He had a disconnect of the dots when it came to understanding it would make his most faithful servant Daniel an enemy of the crown. Some kings do stupid stuff. A bigger issue than the king's foolishness is the test that got dumped on Daniel's plate. He was a faithful man, and this decree forced a choice upon him between doing good by obeying the king and doing the best, worshiping God. Understanding the character of Daniel, it isn't hard to see why he made the choice he did. If you worship the one true and living God, you cannot serve another. The scripture tells us Daniel simply went about honoring God and let the chips fall where they may. Relative to Daniel's story is what comes out of Washington, D.C. at times. Our officials, elected to represent citizens of this country, sometimes forget that and act like Darius's circle of self-serving fools. So what are God's people supposed to do when that happens? It's a simple answer. We do what Daniel did. We keep praying and stay faithful. People marvel and some scoff at the mention of the miracle of hungry, fasting lions that night in the den. And for some who have trouble believing in God at all, that's understandable. But a God who could make time stand still for an hour, according to Joshua chapter 10, or make an axe head float, 2 Kings chapter 6, or create this entire universe just by speaking it into existence, according to Genesis 1, 
That god would have no trouble controlling the appetites of a few lions he created. Truth be told, God has more trouble with his children who claim to be believers than any other part of his creation. For you today, it's said the best time to fix a roof is before it starts raining. That principle applies to deciding what you'll do the next time a ruling of the Medes and Persians comes your way. Remember, it's always on your plate. Will the lions fast or feast? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.